Good morning ladies and gents, welcome to Saturday morning and uh, well I've got a bit of hay on the back, I don't know how we'll see. Ooh. So we're just going to the lane in the Sanderson just to drop off a few more bales that I've sold. But, uh, that'll be good. Well, these are just the last ones from the estate. We've only got two horses left now and they definitely don't need 10 six band four foot long bales. So I'm just going to a few. So yeah, go to the lane, get them loaded and I'll be back now. Right, so we're back. Sanderson did a lovely job as usual. And so did Bertha as well. She took the first load up because she's quicker and more power than that. So, yeah, two loads. Um, I did take those two bales up on the last load. And unfortunately I couldn't fit them in. <laughs> Sanderson's back away. Um, and we've still got plenty of room in here. So, hopefully... And get that old girl backed into here. I need to get rid of my splitter and my saw bench. And there's a bit of space on the other side to get in and out. So if I put one tractor facing this way and one the other way, and leave one gap here for the door, get in and out of them. So that'll be good. So yeah, not too bad. I sat there, got the job. So it mucky up again. Truck needs washing. Oh, it's just filthy. Ah, uh, well, she's got a truck. So, I shall just tidy up this and then we'll get on to the next bit. Right, while we're in here, um, I've not really gone much further on this. Yeah, we haven't got a flat tyre, but... <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't really gone any further with this at the moment. Um, I have got some bits back, I can't remember if I told you. Uh, radiator's back. Uh, fan cowling's back. Uh, air intake's back and the wheel truck's back. Uh, I also sent off the air filter as well, which has been painted. Excuse my rubbish. So I got it painted, the main body of it there. Um, but I did leave the writing on this side. It's the original writing, I don't think I'm going to lose it, so it's not too bad at the moment. But if it ever gets really bad, obviously it might have to get painted. Um, also got a new. Uh, release ram for the pickup hitch if you don't know mbs have uh, an air release on them so where the hooks are underneath the pickup hitch um, usually you pull a cable from the mbs the air i think the little chassis are anyway big ones definitely are so that's a new one uh, new bonnet catches which you fall over and they're about 40 odd quids worth each one so there's two of them uh, in fact, I'll show you why as well, because, well, that's the uh, bonnet catch. <laughs> you can see how far it should come out compared to what those are. So that's new. Uh, new rubber for the uh, radiator to go around. I need to cut it in half, but that's fine. And two stabiliser arms as well, which I can't quite understand because that end moves. <laughs> there is nothing in there to stop it. So I presume with the implement on, if you wind those in or out, it should lock itself that on full extent and then basically pull itself in rather than push itself away, if that makes sense. The new Holland's basically got pinholes all the way up and you move the, re the arms to where it suits your length, lengthwise and then put a pin through. Um, there is a hole there, but it's just for the... Can you see it? There's a, a roll pin in there, so I think that's all that's for. So anyway, that's that. Uh, Pickup hitch is still away at the moment, getting done. Uh, it took that last week, and I think it was, and the linkage is still away. So I'm just kind of waiting for stuff before I can get going again. I thought I'd just show you this while I'm across. So this is the old beech tree, it's a copper beech tree that used to be stood here. I actually took the top out of it well, 15, 18 years ago because um, the crown had all died off, it was on its way out but I wanted to give wildlife a bit of a home so this tree was left up and dutifully the woodpecker had actually started having a go so you can see these holes in here yeah, we did actually have a nest in here somewhere if I can find it probably can't now but 
Yeah, basically the woodpecker have been in there. And we've also got a beehive here. So hopefully, it's carrying an egg there. So this is actually a beehive in here. And this one came from, this one actually came from the main house. So in the front of the main house, between the cavity wall, there's a bees hive. And it's been there for donkey's years, ever since the owners moved in. Um, and this was actually a swarm that flew out and found this tree and started living in it. And this swarm's been here for a good 10, 15 years. Um, I just wanted to check that the bees are actually here. And by the looks of it, they are, which is nice. Obviously, when you turn the house from vertical to horizontal, it kind of screws things up a bit. Um, but I'm hopeful they're going to stay there. What I really should do is move the whole log that's left and put it somewhere out of the way. Um, but the horses are fine eventually anyway. Uh, but the other, th the other thing is there's actually a crack that runs up and over. That's why a bit of wood's on the top to try and stop the rain and cold getting too far in. But uh, yeah, it's cracked as well. So I might see if we can find somebody who'd want to gather it up and take it with them. Take the swarm away, or take the hive away, before it dies out. Anyway, right, I'm going to turn my back to the wind this time because yesterday's video was annoying me because of the wind. So I actually got asked a question yesterday from Forces Farming. I think it was Jeremy. But yeah, Jeremy actually asked the question about the hedge cutting of why don't we lay the hedges. So I have actually done some hedge laying. I'll show you now. So this is actually a piece of hedging that I laid uh, quite a few years ago now actually, must be a good 10 years ago. So it just starts from there and runs up to about here. So the farmer next door actually planted all this hedge line down here and all the trees and little coppice at the back because this is a, a triangle which then joins to our fields next door. Um, so yeah I laid this and this is what we've come back with. So there's actually quite a nice dense area, but this took me about two days. Granted, because I haven't done this before. I haven't done a lot of hedge line before, but it took me two days. Now, our hedge cutting lad did all this, all that bit, all that field, and return, and pretty much about an hour and a half. And it's looking at the NNA, NAAC, which is like the Contracts and Association, agriculture they give a, a price for contracting per year kind of a guideline for everybody at the moment his cutting with a flail is at about 47 quid an hour i think it said and the hedge lanes 17 pound a meter per meter so <laughs> you don't really get a lot laid in a day you probably do about 10 meters or so 10 15 maybe 20 at a push um so when you're actually paying somebody to do it, it's not worth it. I should also say that if you don't know, I only work here. This is not my place. But I've been here long enough that I know what kind of happens. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so hedge lane would be wonderful to do, but it takes time. And especially on young hedges, there isn't really any stakes to go in either. I managed to pull a few out of here, but it wasn't great. In the end, you still end up having to flail it off. Um, to keep the height down. You can't just keep laying and laying and laying and laying on top of each other. At some point you need to take the top off it. Um, so that kind of, yeah, for the smaller ones, I can understand it. Um, especially for the caravan hedges here as well. That are actually pretty much ripe for laying down here because they're about the right size to go through. Just lay them over, but again with horses, they're quite destructive for a backup, especially when not our horses. We'll back up and put a wire in it, so the hedge eventually will hold the wire up and keep them there. Um, and secondly, this is quite a good example anyway, uh, the size of the trees or the hedging that is left, that's original, is big. It's like a, a foot 18 inches diameter at bottom. Those ones are the same. Those ones are the same. 
Um, trying to lay them is nigh on impossible. You just fell them and start again from the bottom, let them regrow and plant around them. Um, again, there's some more hedge in there. It's done the same. It's really long and leggy. But trying to lay it is pretty much impossible. You better just chop, in, chop off it and start it again. So I hope that kind of explains it. It might be a bit of a long-winded way, but if you're not in tree work or forestry or ag, hopefully that kind of explains it a bit. Um, but if anybody's got any other ideas, let me know. I'm quite happy to talk to you about it. Um, but it's just how we do it, to be fair. So, right, it's now lunchtime, so I'm going to head off home and uh, put my feet up for the rest of Saturday. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.